Hey everybody, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to my channel and you like Dollar Tree DIYs, DIYs on a budget, just DIYs in general, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. So today I have been thinking a lot about home and that's because pretty much I'm spending 24 hours a day at home. But I was just thinking about this and many things that I have seen today um, have been about being thankful and recognizing the good in uh, our situation. And so I am thankful for my home. I'm thankful for a safe place to be. I am thankful that my family uh, is with me. And I'm thankful for a job that I am able to do from my home. And so there's just so many things to be thankful for. And I think sometimes, especially with all of the bad news that we see and uh, the things that are going on around us, it's easy to focus on those. So I just wanted to take a minute today to focus on being thankful. And so my two projects today are very similar. They're two different signs and they're farmhouse style, but they both say home on them. You could create these to say anything you want on them. This is just what I was doing, what I was thinking about, and what I had the supplies on hand to do. So we're just gonna jump in and do these two farmhouse signs that celebrate home. For this first sign, I will be using four identical picture frames. These are for a three and a half by five inch picture, but the frames are actually about five and a half by eight inches. I will also be using one of these home signs that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And I'll be using some foam board. You can get this at Walmart or Dollar Tree. So I'm going to remove the stands off of the back of the picture frames and they just come right off, just pull gently until it pops off. Then I'll be taking all of the contents out of the picture frame and I'm going to use the glass as a template to cut out foam board it, the exact size of the glass. And I will cut out a total of four, one for each picture frame. I found that it was easiest to use a ruler and an X-Acto knife and I made sure to put a cutting board underneath this so that I didn't damage my table while I was cutting them out. Next I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I'm going to paint one side of all four of the pieces of foam board. It's best to use just a thin coat of paint to make sure that your foam board doesn't get too wet and wrinkle up. You can always add another coat once that first coat is dry. Then I'm going to take that same ivory chalk paint and I'm going to paint all four of the picture frames. And I did have to do a couple of coats of paint on these to cover up the black. Next I'm going to take apart this wooden home sign that I got at Dollar Tree. I was so excited when I found this there. I picked up a couple of them and they are just held together with some little staples and if you just kind of wiggle it back and forth you can pull them apart and just do this carefully so that you don't break anything but they come apart fairly easily. I did have to use a little tool on this last one. It was a little tough, but not anything major. So now a couple of the letters have the little staple ends sticking out, and these are very sharp. And so uh, I am going to use a pair of wire cutters and snip them off as close to the wood as I can. And when doing this, either make sure you are wearing protective eye gear or uh, you can see here I'm placing my hand right over the top of that because those little pieces will go flying and you do not want to get one of those in your eye. Next I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. This is just black. You could use any black craft paint 
and I am going to use a foam brush and paint the front of each letter and then I'm using a smaller brush to paint the edges. Once the black paint is dry, I'm going to take a dry brush and a little bit of ivory chalk paint and I'm going to offload my brush so that I only have a little bit of paint on that brush and then I'm going to lightly go over the edges and across the top of the letter just putting a little bit of accent on it and uh, just giving it a little bit of a, a more distressed look. And if you get a little too much of the white paint, you can always add a little bit of black over the top of it. So now I'm going to assemble my frames back together. And as you can see, the foam board has bent a little bit from that paint. So I am going to place that in the frame and then I'm going to place the glass back in the frame so that it will hold that foam board down tight against the frame and um, I'm doing this also just to give it more stability and then I'm going to add the back of the frame back on and push those little tabs down and now that glass is sandwiched between those so if it did happen to break it would be um, enclosed in there uh, but I think this will be a pretty sturdy sign. So now I'm going to take some chalk paint in the color truffle. This is a dark brown. You could use any brown craft paint for this. And I'm going to dry brush across the frame and also across the front of that foam board just to distress this a little bit as well. And I'm going to do that on all four picture frames. Now I'm going to glue my frames together and I'm going to be putting the first one horizontally and then I'm going to alternate one horizontal, one vertical, one horizontal, one vertical. And so I am going to measure and make sure I have the same amount of overlap on each side and mark that and then I'm going to glue uh, them together using some Gorilla Hot Glue and then I will use a craft stick and add some extra hot glue at the joint and put that craft stick on there to help uh, give it a little bit more stability. Then I will just continue gluing the picture frames all together in the same way and as you can see when I glue the craft stick on um, it's a little bit long so I'm just snipping it off. I'm using wire cutters. You can even use a good pair of scissors for these craft sticks if they're not very thick. And the final step for my sign is to glue my letters on. And so I am just going to use some Gorilla Hot Glue and glue these right to the center of each frame. And the reason I decided to alternate horizontal and vertical was because the M on this was so wide. It was, it was too wide to do them vertically and the sign just looked kind of too short. Um, when I put them all horizontally so I thought this was a good compromise and I really like the way it turned out. So if you don't have the wooden home sign from Dollar Tree a couple of options might be one you could just paint the letters on uh, two you could print some off and like decoupage them on to your sign or if you had a large stencil or large stickers you could do that so there are some options if you are not going out of your house right now and don't have uh, these wooden letters you can also get wooden letters at Walmart they're about a dollar eight a piece I believe so there's my 
first home sign and I really like it. For my second home sign, I'm going to be using this same wooden sign from Dollar Tree, but you could use some of those options that I just talked about. I'm also going to use this piece of spring garland that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Uh, an alternative to that is just a stem of greenery from Dollar Tree. And then I am going to be using this board that I have. I made this for, uh, into a Valentine project and I'll link that video in the description box below if you want to see that. But it's just made out of a scrap piece of board that came as packing material in a package I received. So you can use any type of board. I didn't have to paint this one. It came with that finish on it, but you could paint it if yours isn't already finished. So again, I did the same steps with my letters as I did before, where I took the sign apart and painted the letters black. And then I am taking my little spring garland. This was just a piece that I had left over from my Easter wreath that I made a few weeks ago. And I am going to just wind it into a circle um, around a couple of times. And then the last time around, I'm going to wrap it around the whole thing just to hold it together. And I'll be using this as the O in the word home on my sign. So when I made this love sign back in February, I decided that I wanted to uh, make it just so it would sit on a shelf or a hearth or in a window so um, I could make it reversible and I had thought of putting the word home on the other side. So that's kind of where I was going with that in the very beginning and so I didn't want to glue my wreath on this because I want to be able to change it up for different seasons. So uh, I am going to be putting a little nail in so that I can hang the little wreath on that, but I will be gluing the letters on. And again, I'm just using the Gorilla Hot Glue for this. So I just placed a mark where I wanted the nail to be for my little wreath and then I'm going to use a small finishing nail and just uh, tap that in a little bit so it's sticking out a pretty good amount so that I can hang the little wreaths on that. To make a wreath out of greenery from Dollar Tree or Walmart or wherever, uh, I just took some wire that I found in the garage just laying around and I'm using a jar to kind of form a better circle so that it's uh, a little bit more precise than just trying to bend it myself. And then I twist that together and then I'm going to take some of the greenery and just cut pieces off of that and just start using some floral tape to attach it to the wire and just one stem at a time I'm just going to wrap the end and then I'll continue to add to it all the way around. So once I have the greenery on, this is what it looks like and it's a little messy. So I took a piece of floral wire that's green and I am wrapping it around the wreath to kind of pull those stems in closer and make it a little bit tighter of a wreath since I don't have a lot of room on my sign for a wreath that's, that's bigger. And if there are any pieces that are sticking out, I just tuck them in or wrap them around just so the wreath will look a little bit more uniform. And I love this, that it can be switched out because in the fall you can make um, one with small leaves or um, in the, you know, for Christmas you can make a little Christmas wreath to put there. So uh, 
I really like that. Now, I decided after I got this all done that I didn't really like the black letters on this sign, so I changed it up. I painted the tops of the letters with the ivory colored chalk paint, and I have to say that I like it a lot better. Uh, I just wasn't real thrilled with the color of the background on the board with the black letters. Uh, I just didn't think it looked as farmhouse as I wanted it to, so I decided to change it up. So here's what it looks like now. And I did dry brush these letters with the truffle brown paint just to give them a little bit more of a distressed look also. But I really like how it looks with the white letters. So there are my two farmhouse home signs. Let me know in the comments below which one you like the best. And also tell me something that you are thankful for during this time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day. Really, Cece?